Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? You're watching episode 86 and this one is dedicated to Jesse's dad. <laughs> He's gonna call me about that. Guys, we're sorry. We know something happened last episode that it just rocked people's world and we owe everyone an I apology. I already forgot about it. Oh my God, I did it. I literally, I woke up 12 times last night thinking about it, like in a sweat. Oh my God, I just, it, it's so frustrating. You guys, first of all, the reason it's frustrating is one, because I really have zero clue what happened. Also, the, the whole video had been exported. It's an hour and 21 minutes. And you might be like, yeah, um, no, it's an hour and 12 minutes now, Lily. <laughs> Cause that's the one you guys watched. And I had exported it and we uploaded it, but I had forgotten to put the Halloween intro music, which I mean, not, not the end deal. of the world, but like, it was like, well, that's fast. And like, it's worth it. I'll just re-export. Well, I hadn't slept. So I re-exported, uploaded it. And I was like, okay, it's up, good night. And then Jesse assumed that it was fine because it should have been fine because why would it just not export the last nine minutes? And I thought like, maybe I ran out of hard drive space. No. Nope. I didn't. I have no explanation. I have zero clue what happened. It just cut off. Yeah, it literally just cut off with me talking. And then there was there was no closing thoughts, no outro, which I'm so pissed about because I feel like I I dropped some good nuggets of truth at the last, like, very end. My plan was that we were just going to show it now. Oh, my God. It's nine minutes long. We can't do that. We can, like, cut it down. Okay. If there's anything relevant, we'll put it in here. I don't think it was that good. I was just... I was just being dramatic. But. I honestly was too um, annoyed that it happened that I didn't even look to see where it was cut off. Did we get through all the Michelle stuff? I couldn't even watch it to see where it cut off because it gave me so much anxiety. So I just pretended it didn't exist. But then we got emails about it and comments about it and tweets about it. And I was like, I, I got uh, guys, we know, we know. We know. I'm so sorry. I like did a pin comment, but it was too late and all the tweets. Uh, anyway, I think that we might have had like another Michelle video that we reacted yeah, to. Yeah, we reacted to her most recent uh, video. Like it was like her latest one. And then also we talked about like weaponized incompetence and like her husband and how we felt like that's what he was doing. Uh, yeah, that was one of the best parts. Okay, we'll include that now. You probably are at a point where she is relying on TikTok money because I'm sure that that's a hell of a lot more than she's making from Definitely. bartending. But yeah, didn't you say that she used to do like funny customer interactions and stuff? Like, yeah, yeah, all the time. So I guess maybe if she's running dry from that, but then it's like, then go to work more i don't know it's it is definitely it's a lot like and again she doesn't do it once or twice she's done it so many times there was one i sent you about like his inability to clean a baby bottle i i never let my husband clean the bottles but he tried to do something nice i said thank you but now i'm having to redo it do you guys see this he was like that's just from it being old no you just you don't know how to clean it but thank you so I'm going to properly clean this and show you what it's actually supposed to look like. Show him too. Oh, he's just not going to care though, but whatever. Take this whole thing out. Go like that. Have hot water. Okay. Are you ready? This is what it should look like. So ma'am, why are you making a TikTok and telling us? Cause we know how to clean things. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've said this on, I don't know, one episode of all of ours, but I've, I feel like I've mentioned before that I really dislike the humor of like, my husband's so fucking stupid. Like, I don't like that humor. I think it's like women covering up for shitty men that they married. And I really dislike it because that is not a joke to live with that. It's not, and I, I saw a lot of comments of people who had experiences similar to hers and were like, I just know she's in hell hell right now like yeah. that's for sure she's not in a good situation and it's not like something to be like right guys like our fucking idiot husbands no first of all you shouldn't like I, I feel like even women in my own life will talk about their husbands that way like oh my god these guys are so freaking dumb. and I'm like do you like your husband? Like, I don't know. I don't That's like the that. Thing. I'm like, I get when there's maybe something you tease them for or like that it's like non-harmful things, but it's not like just like shitting on them because there comes a point where you're just like, oh, you have a lot that you don't like about them, but I actually never hear you talk about how you love them. So that's interesting. Like, I just feel like this in particular, it's a situation where I have had multiple moments where, yeah, I am very particular about how I like things, my dishes. Like when I was pumping, I was very, very particular about how I wanted my pumping stuff clean and sterilized and all that stuff. And I did have to kind of like, not just Nassim, my mom, like I am very particular about how I like things done. And so I have to communicate that to people. And 
multiple times my husband has shown up and consistently like he learned how to do the dishes the way I like them and then he's just always done it like that ever since like if your partner gives a shit about you they're gonna do things in a way that you're not gonna have to do them after they've done them because I feel like that's like incompetence first of all I think your husband should be able to clean a baby bottle and not leave like residue or something that seems like a pretty bare minimum like the bar is pretty low but the worst part of this video to me is that she starts cleaning it to be like, I'm gonna show you what you're supposed to do. But then says, I know he won't care. Well, that is weaponized incompetence. It's someone that's saying, I cleaned it. What are you on about? Like I literally cleaned it. And just because it's not as clean as you want it or the perfect way you did it, I still did it. No, but you didn't do it because now I have to do it again because you left milk residue, which actually collects bacteria and our baby is young as fuck and they're gonna have to drink from that. I'm not just being a nitpicky bitch. You're doing it wrong on purpose so that you never have to do it again because he knows that she's not gonna ask him to do it again. That's it. He fucked it up so bad. She's not gonna ask him to do the baby box. She doesn't even seem to want to have a conversation with him. About, I mean, maybe she did, but like, why are you having this conversation with TikTok and like scolding TikTok basically as if they're your husband because you say he won't care? He should care. That's the problem here. It's not that he doesn't know how to clean. I mean, <laughs> that's also a problem. But like the main problem here is that you just said it. Like he doesn't even care to try. And then the second anyone else agrees with you, which is ironic because it seems like she's wanting people to agree with her. But then the second anyone tries to kind of come for her marriage, then she gets super defensive and is like, how dare you tell me to get a divorce? And it's like, well, all you do is complain about him. You both seem like you'd be maybe happier if you weren't together. If somebody would explain to me how we are not a happy, normal family. People are saying that I won't admit that my husband is an alcoholic. Yeah, I will. I will admit it. My husband has a problem stopping drinking once he starts. So yeah, that he's an alcoholic. I stayed sober. Our son was sleeping. He was taken care of. I know that my husband shouldn't have brought that person into our house. It was only one person, by the way. Y'all are all talking about groups of robbers. But I do find it crazy the amount of people that have my name in their mouth right now. They become obsessed with talking about me because they're obsessed with the amount of views. I remember the first video I ever did that got over 30,000 views. Bro, I thought I was famous, okay? I remember how it felt, so I get it. But you know what would suck? Is if that video was talking crap about somebody else because then your whole identity becomes- Like your husband? Oh my God, I know. Not your whole page just being you talking shit about your husband. Yeah, it's like, okay, what do you know mean? Him. Well, again, and I said that in like, when we talked about um, that Scarlett and Tiana debacle, where it's like, if something is jeopardizing your peace and it does look like it's jeopardizing her peace, it definitely looked like she, it looks like she's bothered. And I get it. Your family's under attack from the internet, all of that stuff, it's fucked up. Ask yourself why. But why? Yeah, you gave them the ammo to do it. You gave people a laundry list of things to react to and then you got mad when they did this is the internet it's like don't do that i feel like that's such a lesson in almost like i don't know 70 percent of the shit we cover it's like don't put that on the internet please thank you have a nice day like just it's why why do it she is sharing personal things that do nothing but make her husband look bad and she's the one doing it and then she gets mad that people are mad at, yeah like make it make sense yeah and again it's like the main critique we have about her is that she overshares and that her husband's shitty. And not just because he like has a drinking problem. Like he just has a character flaw as a husband and he's not a very good partner, it seems, in any way, shape, According or form. to her. Like that's based entirely off the information that she has shared. Exactly. So now when people get on here and say, damn, this very large creator constantly talks about how shitty her husband is. And then he almost made it so that they got robbed. Like... That's, people are gonna talk about that. And yes, I understand that like, you feel like you talking to the internet is like your way to get things out, but I promise you, it's not. And like, yes, the people that support you, there may be some people who make you feel like you're safe to speak that way. And like, you you have a safe space. You don't. Like, as long as you're posting onto your TikTok where there's millions of people who can see, you are not safe on the internet and you should never presume that you are. Like, she just started her job and we talked about it in our last video where she literally drops the address and the intersections. It's like, Jesus. But that business got bombarded with fake reviews of like one star and it was this fucking disaster. And then they finally got those reviews removed 
removed. And it's just like this drama is going to follow you because you continue to share too much shit. Just stop doing that. And I promise you the peace will come. Like that is what you're craving is just at your fingertips. All you have to do is like not press record. I promise. <laughs> you're standing in the shallow end and all you have to do is stand up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful week and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I'm sure we will, right, Lily? Lots of plans. <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> we have kind of, I think, decided, we have decided our um, Halloween costumes, so. I feel like people are gonna be so disappointed. <laughs> no, I think they'll like it. I think it's good. It might not be last year's, but be nice. <laughs> um, but the, someone pointed out that Halloween is on a Tuesday. It is. Should we delay that episode to go up on the Tuesday? I say no, but it's up to you guys. I think let's just upload on Monday. It's like, and then the like give it, give you more time to enjoy the Halloween spirit. Yeah, I feel like people vibe for a little bit. Like the weekend before Halloween, people go to Halloween parties. Like everybody's dressing up for a couple of days before Halloween. I don't see the problem with one day before Halloween. And we usually upload at night anyway. So it'll practically be almost Halloween. Well, and not to mention like, it's not like we're doing it and then like both going to Halloween parties after in our yeah. costumes. First of all, it's a, it's like a couple's kind of costume. So it, we wouldn't, it wouldn't stand alone if we went somewhere just by ourselves. Literally people would be like, like, who are you supposed to be? <laughs> but also, we're just not doing anything. But anyway, let us know what you guys want because we're down for whatever. Monday, Tuesday, who cares? Yeah. It's going to go up around there. Anyway, that's all that we have for you guys today. I hope you do have a wonderful weekend. And as always, we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. If that was random for you, then um, you should probably just go watch the last episode so you know what's going on. <laughs> Anyway, we do have an episode of topics that hopefully make it entirely into this episode today. One is a topic that I have been getting suggested to cover for so fucking long. I mean, we get comments, tweets, everything about this lady, Lauren the Mortician. Have you seen those tags? So yes, and I still don't know anything about it. But um, when I was frantically searching for something this morning for guys, it's been pretty dry. There's not a whole lot going on. I was looking for something. And one of the things that came up was someone saying that someone had like an off vibe about a creator and that she thinks she finally knows who it is. And it was this person. I've never heard of Lauren the Mart. Uh, Lauren the Mart. Wow. Lauren the Mortician. Yeah. Well, she's a mortician. <laughs> well, actually, that's a whole <gasps> other drama. She is a mort. She was a mortician, is a mortician, can still be one if she wants to, but hasn't been in years. It's kind of complicated. What exactly is a mortician? It's like someone that works in a funeral home. Yes, but the mortician is, from what I understand, I always have to preface with that, from what I understand, the person that does the embalming, the picking up of the body, mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff, like helps the process along from the moment the body arrives to when it's like casket ready type of thing. There's this, it's um very politically incorrect. I mean, it was politically incorrect at the time too. And that was the point. It, it's like a satire. But um, have you ever seen Drop Dead Gorgeous? Mm -mm. Kirsten Dunst. It has like a all-star cast. It's Kirsten Dunst, Kirstie Alley, Brittany Murphy, RIP, uh, Amy Adams, a bunch of just random people. And it's like the very beginning of their careers. But um, Kirsten Dunst's character is, uh, <laughs> she works in a funeral home and does their makeup. The whole thing is based around a beauty pageant and her talent is tap dancing. And that's where she practices because it doesn't bother anyone. <laughs> That's not that bad. It get, uh, there's a lot of other aspects that are bad, but it's hilarious. I feel like I went on a kick like a couple months ago where I was watching all those old like 90s, 2000s movies. And almost all of them are super politically incorrect, but also like in the way of like, it's either making fun of gay people or like a bunch of gay jokes or it's making fun of uh, like special needs people. Oh, well, that's one of the biggest problems in the Drop Dead Gorgeous. The R word is used a lot. Oh my God. It was like, it was so crazy if you're looking back at it now. And it's like, there's a lot of parts of the movie that are supposed to be politically incorrect. And like, it plays that up because it's like, takes place in Minnesota and it's like the small town beauty pageant. It's really just, it's... It's a journey. But um, then there's aspects like that where it's supposed to be the comedic relief and it's not supposed to be like, I mean, it is supposed to be offensive, but not in the way that it is now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, anyway, back to Lauren the Mortician. So yeah, she's been on TikTok for a while, but she got big, I would say in the last like year or so. You know, she hasn't been like a huge creator for years and years and years. How does a mortician get big on TikTok? Okay, so that's actually a very important part of this because she got big primarily from telling stories, like kind of crazy stories or things of how people have died. Oh I know, right? So yeah, but I guess how people perceived it was like she was trying to bring awareness to prevent this t from happening to someone else. Like, for instance, one of her biggest things, which got her into 
trouble recently is child safety, right? So she would warn people about the ways that she's seen kids come in to be like, hey, this is a hazard. Don't ever let this happen to your kids kind of thing. It sounds really bad when I'm bringing it up, but in the time where she got big, people really saw it as like this awareness that a mortician brought to other people. But she also does answer questions about, you know, anything people have questions about. Like, hey, if I have an IUD in, does it get buried with me? Or like little things like that where people want to know more about the after death process, which is totally normal. And then she does educate people. I personally do not like the telling stories that involve other people's death loved ones and I think that even though a lot of people saw it as educational and it wasn't always like this tasteless like horrible thing necessarily there are situations I saw one today where a woman said that she knew someone who was like a sister of someone that Lauren the mortician was talking about and the family apparently did not appreciate the way that she was like speculating around the death of her like just talking about it in general so that's what I was gonna say is she's not the person that does the autopsy like why is she talking about like I don't know. That feels like kind of a disconnect for me. Obviously, she can like even if she see was the person doing them. the autopsy. Oh well, they shouldn't do it either. But like you know, like I don't feel like she necessarily even knows how they died. Well, that's the thing. So uh, one of the major things she talks about or talked about at this point was getting called on the scene of things. So saying like there was a car accident. I was on the scene picking up that body, and this is what I saw. Basically, what? So there is a mix here. There's like people on their 50-50 on this, right? Because some people say that is true. In some cases, morticians will be called out to get the body and take them to the funeral home. Other people, like people who work in like paramedics and that are usually on the scene were like, I have literally never seen a mortician there in my life. Like there are split opinions on this on whether or not she's telling the truth. Also, she's from allegedly a pretty small town. And she's told so many of these stories time and time again. And people are like, there's no fucking way you saw all this shit because, oh my God. There's so much information in my brain. How do I share it all at once? Yeah, I, I'm this. Thank you for looking all this up. <laughs> so she got her mortician license in 2017. OK, but she's been a stay at home mom for a couple years now. I think her youngest son is like two years, two ish years. And she started being a stay at home mom when she had her second child. And she, I believe, only if you do the math on that, only got to practice for like two years. And yet has like seemingly endless stories. And it's from like a small town. So there's allegations all over the place of like she's stealing other mortician stories or worse, even like making them up. We're not sure what's happening. Where is she getting the other mortician stories? (laughs) I'm not sure about all of that. That's all like speculation surrounding her. And the reason why people have started kind of turning on her is because she is an interesting character. She really is... um, I don't know how to describe it. She like is embracing the haters, you know, that type that's just like, oh. she's put egging people on at this point with the things that she does and her like addressing the things that people are saying, like kind of constantly. Like I just scrolled down her page for a while and like every other TikTok I felt like was like something of her referencing the hate that she gets. Like, I feel like that just eggs people on when you're constantly, constantly, constantly talking about the hate. I guess I, I let me, can we see yes, some yes. of her? Yes, Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to even remotely claim to be any kind of expert or knowledgeable person on how the like protocol for who's picking bodies up at scenes. But like that feels very not like what would happen because I feel like you wouldn't even necessarily decide what funeral home you're using. Like you wouldn't decide that at the scene of the accident. So she has 2.6 million followers. Her username on TikTok is Love Miss Lauren. She's been on Laura Cleary's podcast most recently. She has been on Bunny's podcast. You know, Bunny, Jelly Roll's wife. Oh, oh, wait. Did she just do one with Jeffrey? Yeah. Uh huh. So she's been on those podcasts. Um, this is her. I'm just choosing a. Actually, I'll choose an interesting TikTok. Of ash and bone per vial. $30 plus shipping. Where's the listing? Send me the listing. I want to buy, and I want to pay the extra $5 for the back drama story too. Who sells their mama's ashes on Facebook Marketplace? And by the way, I'm pretty sure it is legal to do that, so once the crematory shuts off, that's considered final form of disposition. Similar to when you bury somebody in the ground and you place the dirt over the top of them, once they're fully covered, that's considered final form of disposition. Once the crematory shuts off, everything harmful has been burned away anyways but it's not every day you see somebody trying to sell their mama in glass vials on facebook marketplace oh my god you know it's got to be a great fucking backstory somebody send me the listing i'm buying grandma so she did end up getting these ashes and funny enough taking them to a jelly roll concert what (laughs) 
So she made like a really weird joke around this. So the backstory is that this mom, I guess, was abusive to him. And so that's why he sold her ashes. You mean the drama she was referring to? Yeah, the like, $5 <laughs> she would spend to, to figure out the drama. That's the drama is that the mom was like, just not a good mom, which hear me out. I understand why he would sell the ashes or like make a joke out of it. I don't understand why she would partake in it, especially in her field, considering the fact that her, I guess it could be seen as disrespecting these ashes, like carrying them around, like laughing with them, going to a fucking concert. Using them as a prop. Yeah, using them as a prop, essentially, exactly. That is like a really weird thing to do when you're a mortician and you're supposed to be unbiased in like everything about death, right? Like, I know you're a human being and you have thoughts and whatever, but like your career, it doesn't matter if they're a good person or a bad person. Like if someone is dead, they should have some form of respect. Like, even if they're fucking the dead, horrible. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. And I even kind of found it weird that she like tried to throw in some like insider technical knowledge. That is indicative of her style in general. Like she kind of laughs. She talks about like death and stuff in a very kind of chill way, which isn't necessarily bad. Yeah, I don't think that like talking about death is a bad thing. I don't think even getting comfortable with death is a bad thing. I think that we're way too scared and like just traumatized by death in general. But it's just interesting for her to do as someone who has the platform she has on the premise of like being this educational resource in a way. I just thought that aspect seemed weird. I guess maybe if a lot of people were asking that, I guess my first thought wouldn't be like, is that legal? I feel like you could do whatever you want with your mom's ashes. But like her inserting that felt kind of like, I can do this because I'm a mortician. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. And also like her caption, I'm looking at it right now. This is a stellar find. Send it to me. Stellar find? Like the information aside, I just like, this is weird. Like why right? would you do that? Yeah. So one of the main things that have, you know, like when I made, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a comparison. When I made my uh, Sam Pepper story time, do you remember that? When you tried to, when you were going to beat him up? Yeah. And when I said that, he said, but were you there though? Were you there though? Were you there though? And I kept repeating it in the video. Were you there though? <laughs> were you there? I looked at him. I was like, oh, I didn't have to be there. You, you should have seen the way that my friend was crying because you pushed her. He goes, <laughs> but were you there though? Were you there? I'm not even shitting you. I would say a response and all he had to say was, but were you there though? That became a thing. Not only did people, and honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if people still comment that on his things. Like it became such a like staple, but were you there though? Making fun of Sam Pepper and it became common to tag me in things and put, but were you there though, whatever. That's very similar to what's happened with her in the sense that whenever there is a product that is seemingly unsafe for children, she will get tagged in it her name and then they'll put Beetlejuice and then it'll be all of them saying Beetlejuice, 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 Beetlejuice because she's kind of like gothic and like she likes like coffin and dark aesthetic to that type of thing. So I don't know if that's why they call her Beetlejuice sense, or if it's tradition. just because I haven't ever followed her. So I don't know where this originated. Maybe she referenced it as like, oh, you guys are calling me like it's Beetlejuice. Time. I don't know what the fuck the joke is, but that's what people do. Well, isn't it that Beetlejuice, like you say his name in three, three times mm -hmm. and then he pops up. Yeah. So I guess she made a joke about that one time and it just stuck so that has uh been interesting because now lauren the mortician has really gotten herself into hot water by kind of becoming a child safety expert but not being an expert at all in She's just a mom and a mortician. Neither of which really make you a <laughs> child safety expert even remotely. But right. Okay. Which, okay, she defends herself by saying I'm a mom, I have the right to have an opinion on child products, you do. However, I think that when you're endorsing things or speaking over actual experts, then you become problematic. Just speaking as like a voice of authority on something that you aren't. Right, and then belittling people, but... Oh. <laughs> so this is a reference to her little Beetlejuice inside joke. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, shut up! You fucking crazy? We don't want that guy running around in here. No, Johnny, he'll be on our side. He'll help us. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Hey, you are meddling with powers you do not understand. Cut the shit. That's the type of thing that she does that will like, uh, it'll call the haters to her. It'll, it'll be like a revamping of the snark pages and all that stuff. Like she almost just keeps it going every so often. It's quite interesting. So there's a few reasons why she got herself into hot water in the child safety expert world. One of them being she's not only like doing the right thing and denouncing things like water beads or like, I think she did one on like toddler tape where they like literally tape a toddler's mouth shut for sleep so that they don't get cavities. And she's like, no, don't do that. Like certain things I'm like, 
period. But then she will suggest things that others are like, hey, maybe don't do that. And this is one of them. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. Hello fellow mortals, and welcome to another episode of The Morbid Minute. Today we are testing and reviewing The Splash Zen. A product invented by a mom and dad designed to keep water in your tub. Sticks here on the one side. Got the little handle, and then there's these strips that you attach. Okay, and I'm actually gonna move my strip so that it evens out with the bottom of this. And that's what keeps the water in your tub. This wouldn't be a Morbid Minute episode without a little experiment for science. So Annabelle is going to be getting in the tub and I'm going to be timing myself how long it takes me to grab her with the splash then and without the splash then. So she proceeds to do this with this doll, right? She like times it, she goes to like pick it up as fast as she can and she basically comes to the conclusion that it's pretty much the same with the splash then and without the splash then. And then this is the ending. As a disclaimer, I was not paid for this. However, I do have a discount code. The code is Lauren. I cut from what would be my commissions will be going to a mom in need here on this platform. This is Susie, her two children. Great, she talks about how she's gonna donate the money to Susie, who I've actually seen her story. Her two children died. It was a horrible accident. Scuba diving. Well, they were in the pool of like her ex-husband and instead of oxygen, they were given helium. Just yeah. completely tragic. I, I just saw that the other day, actually. Yeah, so people saw this and a lot of parents were like, why are you suggesting this? Because if you have kids, especially if you have kids, like my daughter is not even two yet. This is not very safe. Like there is a real importance in having like direct access and like being able to supervise your kids 100% and being able to like grab them out of the tub. I actually saw one of uh, my friends on TikTok, she did it like friends only, but she showed her kids in the tub and her daughter like face planted into the water in one second and she was like drowning in the tub and she had to like rip her up. And that could happen in like two seconds. So people were just like, first of all, your experiment is with a doll that weighs nothing. A kid is slippery, they're heavy. They could be crying and that makes it very hard to grab them. There could be just an injury alone trying to get them out of the tub every day, let alone with like a barrier there. And so people were just not, a lot of people, I'm not saying everybody, were a little bit confused as to why she would promote this and then actually like partner with the brand because a lot of people felt like, hey, you like pride yourself on child safety and come for other people saying that they're not safe, but you're promoting this and we don't think this is safe. Basically was a huge sentiment of her community. Like literally, if you look at the comments, it says, I think the issue is the line of sight though. It's harder to see through the splash zone, which is true. It's kind of like foggy. It's just a million things that people were like, uh, maybe don't partner with them. That's weird, which is something that can happen when you proclaim yourself as a child safety expert, people are going to be really, really critical of the things that you suggest. Like you have to be yeah. really careful about what you're promoting. Yeah, I mean, even just the way that she presents it, it's not like she's a mom vlogger testing it out with her kids or something. I mean, I don't think she necessarily <laughs> should be doing that, but it feels like she's doing it from, again, like a voice, she's acting like a voice of authority on child safety. And then to test it out with a doll seems kind of weird, especially you said she has kids, right? She has two, yeah. So it, she kind of almost is removing herself from that mom aspect and like doing it as a mortician, as if a mortician would know, like it's just kind of random. Yeah, for sure. It's out of place and definitely out of her like scope of expertise. Yeah, and like even just safety in general. I feel a mortician is not the person that's like finding out why the person died. Uh, a lot of times I would assume that they know. It's not like autopsy level. They, but I'm a sure lot of they times, know, yeah. but they're not like, I don't know. It just seems like not something a mortician is qualified to. No, for sure. And I feel like, have you ever seen those TikToks that are from people in a certain field of work that they like tell you as a doctor or a pediatrician or a firefighter, I don't know, these are the five things I would never do. Like firefighters will say these are the five electronic things I would never use because they're like yeah, yeah, exploding yeah, yeah. all the time. So I think that working in a place, you can see things that would make you more cautious in the real life and you can like let people know about that, but that does not make you an expert in that field. It's just like, hey, I've seen a lot of things, but that's also regardless of 
your experience. It is anecdotal evidence. It's your experience. Exactly. Well, I was going to say, it's not like scientific proof. It's like no. your firsthand interpretation. And it depends <laughs> on a million things. There's just like so many aspects of like why you've seen what you've seen. I don't know that people were just like, hey, you're acting like you know or can tell us about more than you can, basically. And yeah. I came across this Reddit thread that was basically people saying why they stopped liking Lauren the Mort Mortician. Because again, people really liked her. Like the science community, because she is like educating on like certain things like a lot of people really enjoyed her then seemingly everyone turned on her so I was interested to read some of these one of them brought up a very good point which is that she doesn't have a fence around her pool she has a two-year-old child do you not think a mortician that's well versed on deaths drowning in a pool for toddlers is like very high up there that she wouldn't have a fence around her fucking pool I feel like that's like so insane seems like a bit of a disconnect yes it's like, uh, if we're going to talk about a splash zen, how about you put a splash zen all around your pool, girly pop? Yeah, like, even I know that. Like, I feel like you would even want, you want that for, like, dogs. <laughs> oh, my God, absolutely. But she has two freaking kids, one of which is, like, two freaking years old. Are you kidding me? Why am I saying freaking? <laughs> Not me censoring myself. A lot of people also got really annoyed with her for her car seat safety testing, because that is, we're gonna get into that in a second, her at war with a car seat safety technician. She basically started testing out car seats and letting people know whether she thought they were safe or not. And her only qualifications for that is she is a mom. I was gonna say, that's not even based on her like qualifications as a mortician. That's just her like personal thoughts as a mom. Yeah, and literally as a parent, you have to educate yourself because there is no like rule book. Yeah, when you take a newborn home from the hospital they do check to make sure the newborn is like strapped in right and that's it bye bye see you and like so many parents fuck up because of that because we just we don't know so i remember i turned my son around like i had him front facing way too early i had him like a I think right when he turned two, maybe even earlier than that, honestly. And I didn't know. So it's like, you just have to educate yourself on the topic. And then, so we're supposed to just trust that she's educated herself enough to be able to tell us what's safe or not. There are people that have certifications in this that actually know the things we're looking for when it comes to safety and testing and what that means and how to interpret that data. Like, I don't know shit about that. I just have to trust professionals. Stuff like that baffles me so much though, because like, I'm someone that is so not ever wanting to act like a voice. I mean, I'm not a voice of authority on anything, but like, I don't ever want to claim to know things that I might not because I'm like mortified that I would be wrong. So I couldn't imagine talking about something as like delicate, especially as like, even again, with no kids, I know that child car seat safety is like a very sensitive subject because people have a lot of opinions. So to put not only your opinion out there, but to do it as if you are qualified to do so is risky at best. And especially <laughs> if what you're saying goes against what a uh, person who is certified in this is saying. Like, you don't know more what? than the person that's certified. Yeah, so that brings us into the big element of all this, which is her beef with a fellow TikToker named Jamie, who is a C, oh God, I'm gonna get this wrong, CPSD, children's, He's an expert. He's an expert in this, all right? He has the qualifications. <laughs> He's got the paper. From what I understand, they were actually, I remember seeing a TikTok where they were mutuals at one point, and then all of a sudden on his page, I see on my For You page, him calling out Lauren the Mortician. So his name is the Jamie Grayson, and he's been in the baby industry for 18 years. So like knowing about car seats, he literally has like 30 car seats in his house and like gets, I think, sent them by like the company to review and show parents and stuff. Like a CPST, from what I understand, is not only only an actual like qualified expert in child safety and things like car seats and stuff they also can teach parents how to like you can go to a cpst to teach you how to like actually properly install your car seat and things like that so he knows his shit he does know his shit oh it depends on who you're asking if you ask lauren he doesn't know his shit no way of hate lauren the mortician post i follow her we follow each other we are mutuals i like her content what is not okay is I'm getting tagged all over the place on her account about car seats. I am a CPST. I was first certified as a child passenger safety technician about 10 years ago, and I am now dual certified as a CPST in America and Canada. Okay, uh, Lauren now is not a CPST. She found out today she's gonna go through the class. Great, we need more, we need more. She's intelligent. We need more people who care about this. But right now, her opinion on car seats and what dictates if a seat is safe or not, along with anyone else, if you do not work in this space, it does not matter. That's full stop. That's it. There's 
All car seats that are legal and regulated that are on the market are safe when used correctly. Okay, so these videos about the revolving seats not being safe. No, they're fine. They're fine when they're used correctly. We're all very, t sorry, my AirPods keep falling out. I've been on the phone for three and a half hours. Um, this is, I don't know how to say anything, but this. If you do not work in car seat safety, if you are not a manufacturer, if you do not have the CPST certification, your opinion on if a car seat is safe or not has no merit. We also have no way to test them for safety. We don't have labs. We don't have sleds. We go by the base assumption that car seats available for purchase on the American market get a pass fail. That's what they get. Same in Canada. You get a pass or a fail. So car seats save lives when they are used correctly. So I just, I can't. Like, she's going to be a great tech. Wonderful. Again, we need more. But right now, anyone giving their opinion about car seats when they don't have the training and the credentials, that's like me giving you hair and makeup tips. I'm not an esthetician. I certainly would not. That's the thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's their opinion. It's not their like professional opinion. It's their personal opinion. A hundred percent. And this was in response to someone who had commented and tagged Lauren the mortician. If she says no, I agree, especially since she is the one who is scarred from getting the bodies after accidents. So that is like how she adds to her credentials. She's like, oh, well, I've seen the aftermath. So I know what's safe and what's not. And I will never forget. I almost didn't buy my daughter her revolving car seat so it's like ones that you can turn to the side makes life way easier because I've seen posts and stuff about them not being safe because they say they just like fly off the base and like all this shit and I'm like oh my god but a lot of times that's because the parent didn't like it has like a lock on it and you're supposed to make sure that's green every time that they go in the car and it's just like it could be parent usage because if it was just the bases that would be recalled like the baby industry is not gonna fuck around with that shit it's gonna be recalled yeah it just feels like she's using kind of a like an adjacent thing to be like no, 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 I know, but like, do you? And like CPST, like, so it stands for Child Passenger Safety Technician. That's such a specific thing. Like that, that's not like a wide ranging field of things that you need to know about. So like, yeah, I would trust him. There's some back and forth there with Jamie that like I was kind of catching in the moment, but it was very loose. So I'm going to watch this TikTok that apparently summarizes it, but who knows because it's TikTok and people are all over the place and they just can't get to the point. Well, this summer, Jamie called out Lauren. Now, I don't love the language he used. It was very condescending. Let me tell you what he said. He said, y'all, I love Lauren. I'm mutuals with Lauren. However, she is not a technician, nor should she be giving you car safety recommendations because she has no certification in this process. He even states like the manufacturer is the one that should be deciding this and testing this. Uh, putting it in your car and shaking it is not actually testing. He also mentions that she's a mortician and she knows how to show eyes shut, which that was the part that I didn't like. He also mentioned her being a mom. However, this has more clarity in the future. And as a result, she blocked him. Okay, I kind of vaguely remember that. I guess that part could be seen as kind of like coming for her where he's just like, you're gonna yeah, sew yeah. an eye shut and I'm gonna do what I do. A little harsh, but I understand the sentiment. Yeah, I, and I do remember him getting blocked by Lauren the Mortician. So they're no longer friends, spoiler alert. And she posted a video addressing the situation. In this video, she says like, guys, I, I shouldn't have to address this. Like friends break up. By the way, they were just mutuals. He says they're, they weren't friends more than that. He um, called me out and said that I didn't know anything and it was just very rude if someone says mean things and they don't know anything. And she's like, I used to shout him out. Like she even shows DMs. Like I used to post him and stuff. And if someone has knowledge, like go to them. And then he replied. Okay, whatever. There was a lot of back and forth with both of them, right? It got catty, obviously. Now there's a couple things here. I understand why he's fucking annoyed. I get it. She is doing things like grabbing a car seat and shaking it rigorously to test it when that is not like any sort of standard of practice for car seat safety. Like, for example, using a doll to demonstrate if something is safe for drowning. Yeah, her experiments are um, interesting. But literally, it's just it makes no sense why she would get frustrated that other people are annoyed that her followers are like, 
thinking she's God in all decision making, making for car seat safety and for child safety in general. And then discrediting the actual experts. Yeah, it feels like she thinks she is. It feels like she thinks that she has, you know, all the qualifications for that. Well, not to mention, like, also you shouting him out does not mean that he needs to endorse your fake safety tips. Well, and the thing is, too, is like she doesn't just come for Jamie. She comes for professionals as a whole. So she recently posted oh. her. Yeah, <laughs> she recently posted a after vaccine detox bath. It was problematic because she calls it the poke. She's like, after my kids get the poke, you know, it's like Jesus. the jab. You, you know what that means. She's a conservative. Yeah, actually, yes, that's a whole other segment we have. But basically, yeah, she has that kind of like rhetoric, whatever. And then she was like promoting this detox thing that's for vaccines. And a pediatrician stitched it and said, hey, this is what's in vaccines. This is what they do. This is how they cause an immuno response, all this stuff of why that's important. And talking about how what she suggested are natural remedies, but that a lot of them actually aren't like sufficiently tested and that they don't know, like that could cause like extreme diarrhea, vomiting, which actually there are a few natural remedies that my husband has tried and it's it could give you like stomach problems there's people that like now castor oil is this whole big thing on tiktok i would literally i was just going to say that because i bought castor oil and been using it not for the digestive things but i know that it can cause like extreme diarrhea and stuff like that and like literally flu like symptoms it can cause yeah. and people are thinking natural equals no side effects just like a perfect like it's not that cut and dry i believe it, uh, i've said this a million times when we talk about the oil pulling and all this fucking shit. I do believe in trying natural things. Why not? But you do also need to be informed on that kind of the same way you would be if you were taking Western medicine. Like you need to know what you're putting in your body because all these people putting castor oil in their belly buttons and getting diarrhea later. It's like, sister, what are you doing? You know, so she like promoted something. Pediatrician stitches it, says, hey, I don't think that this is, you know, a good rhetoric because also it does add to the stigma around vaccines. And then we all know everyone thinks that they cause autism. And then she has an autistic child. So I'm I don't confused know. Why? What are you, detoxing from a vaccine? Like, what does that mean? Okay, one of the biggest things that I hear is that it has aluminum in it. Like, one of the preservatives is, like, aluminum. So they believe that it causes, like, heavy metals in your body and then that you need to detox those heavy metals out. I don't know. Uh, listen, I'm not here for the vaccine debate. I'm more confused why you would get the vaccine if you were so worried about the toxins in it. I don't know. That's a good question. Because you would think by her rhetoric that she would be anti-vax, but she's not. Yeah. But it's like, no, we want parts of the vaccine, but not the other parts. So exactly. So detox those. Like, I don't really... doesn't feel like that works. Interest. I thought that was... It, that's not your search history, is it? <laughs> so this is Lauren Stitch to the doctor's stitch. The pokey sticks that my kids get at the doctor's office. So I just wanted to share with you something I found. Ah, so another pediatrician bullying moms online. So because I decide to have a routine for my kids after they get poked to make them more comfortable at home, that all of a sudden makes me anti something because now all of a sudden I'm getting a flood of comments that say that I am anti what you have just stitched of my video. I love natural remedies. I love sharing them. I love talking about them. That that's just my thing. I love them. I don't know if you know this, but I have a degree in science, so I know about vaccines, and in order to be a mortician, I had to get special ones just in case I poke myself with a needle. I'm not anti-anything, and I've never claimed to be an expert in anything other than death. I consistently say that I am an opinionated mother, and I just want to share tips on how to keep people alive and what I do with my own kids. This is just so sad at this point just because I really do like looking into and researching natural remedies does not mean I'm against modern science. I'm too much into science to be against it. I just feel like there's a lot of conflicting ideas here. Right? I know she's very, she's an interesting conundrum. She's like, I'm not an expert, but I have a degree in science. <laughs> yeah. The pediatrician stitched her back and was basically like, I'm not bullying you. Like, if you're spreading any sort of misinformation around a topic that I actually am educated in, and like, also, she like kind of called her out. She's like, I also have a degree in science. And if we're going to like compare education here, I think I win. Like, I don't know what it's required to be a mortician, but I feel like 
like you wouldn't be like super necessarily really well versed in vaccines. Well, and my thing is, if you want to detox your kids or do whatever you think that it is you're doing, understanding the rhetoric around that and what the implications of it are, are important because it's one thing to do it yourself. It's another thing to promote it on your platform. There are a lot of people more now than ever that are terrified of vaccines. I'm just saying like, I think that having that platform and exploring, you know, if you want to talk about how to drink it in fucking chamomile tea helps you sleep at night, that's a different story, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the idea that you need to detoxify your kids from something that you put in their body, which is going to deter people who don't already believe in them even further. Well, and then she refers to it as like making her kids more comfortable. Yeah. Like, huh? There was a Facebook post that has gone ablaze, sisters, because she went off the deep end. And oh, no. like I said, her and Jamie, the car seat safety, I'm going to learn what that acronym is by memory soon. CPSD. No? T. That's the T. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I just want to say PTSD. Yeah, I was like, that's a lot of consonants. I don't know. So like I had said, long standing battle there. I don't know exactly what prompted this other than the fact that she obviously doesn't like him and doesn't appreciate the fact that he does not acknowledge her expertise. Okay. Or the fact that she's a mom, which yes, you can say, hey, I like Graco ones more than Chico because I think Graco's like just easier to install. You could say that. That's a, you're a user of that product. There are certain it's recommendations you can give yeah based off of your experience safety and like how safe something is is not one of those because you're just kind of like i don't know you're just a you're just a consumer you're like speaking us. out of your ass that's <laughs> yeah that's what i'm really thinking so imagine my surprise when i read this it's from her facebook and it says honest question would you take baby product advice all in caps from a man who has no children has 12 to 15 strollers inside their living room also attempts to give baby wearing slash baby carrier product recommendations car seat recs and high chair recommendations to actual mothers you know just wondering hypothetically and all because i sure the fuck wouldn't especially when they link these products conveniently in their bio for you to purchase so they make commissions and gain financially from that never having used the product with a physical baby on a day day-to-day -day basis nah me okay, neither just checking promo right i thought the same thing i was like didn't you just i mean she gave that to the woman supposedly i don't know but i was like first of all what is she implying by the like has 12 to 15 strollers inside their living room because she's he's trying like to a creep yeah that's what i got from it too i'm like are you trying to say he's weird which is problematic in itself because he's a gay man and like what are you insinuating that he's like weirdly into his career like i don't know well, that and especially really... when there's so many horrible stigmas with like the lgbtq and being p words and being creepy and like that it's just, that's just tacky and irresponsible, honestly. Right? And just like her cadence is like, why are you like this? Like, what did, what did you get by this? Like that other person said he was condescending. Um, Is this a joke? <laughs> and literally the honest question, yeah, I would take them over you because guess what? I do know a lot of moms and sometimes moms and I will chat about certain baby products or like experiences we've had. But if I have one of my mom friends and a certified technician, I'm going to believe the technician over my mom friends. Like, well, that's, regardless. again, like, that is such a specific profession. Like, you having kids doesn't make you more knowledgeable than him. You just have some experience using the products that he has different knowledge about. And it's really frustrating because she also comes for, like, I've seen stitches of hers where she's critiqued other morticians. And I just have to ask, like, she seems like the type that if she were to get critiqued, on her work oh, by someone even remotely in the over. field. Yeah, she's the expert in death, even though she's only practiced for like two years, I think. It's very interesting how she like talks about her expertise and how she's qualified and then like belittles others, like well, and their I can't help but notice that she doesn't mention that he's certified in anything in this post. Like she's acting like he's just a random dude that has a bunch of stro- like, Oh my God, that's what? true. Yeah, she's like some guy who hoard strollers yeah, in like, his living room <laughs> what you're really miscontextualizing the entire situation well so like we said that had a weird hint of possible homophobia or something in there it was weird yeah. it was just a strange implication or at least playing that up because you know other people do and like we said with the whole vaccine thing it's smelling smelling like you know what it's smelling like all right i'm gonna say it <laughs> the C word. We know we got C words in these comments. All right, girls, uh, listen. And I know not all of you are terrible. There was some digging done on her Instagram likes. Oh, God. Goldmine. She follows this guy named Anthony Raymond Raymondi. 
Ray, how would you pronounce that? Ra- Raimondi. Oh, that's worse than mine. He is a conservative and, you know, listen, like I said, or like Lily said, conservatives are not all innately horrendous people. This guy spits a lot of the troubling rhetoric around trans people and trans children. And Lauren thinks that's a slay. Because I don't involve children in my shit, in my everyday life shit. That's why I'm fine. I'm going to be okay. Because I'm not trying to mutilate children. That's why I'm going to be fine. So guess what? If you don't... Which one of you is from the New York Times? You know there's only two genders, right? There's only two genders and they know that in Iowa. I challenge... She also liked another post where he talks about how we should be more worried about migrants coming into our country than Donald Trump's crimes. Do you know right now, instead of our own American homeless people, they're taking on hundreds of thousands of migrants that are coming in. They are taking full establishments like hotels here in our country and giving it to them to stay. Did you know that? But your brothers and sisters in the United States that have been on the streets for years, cold and hungry, they don't get that privilege. So we want so we, but we're worried about them and what happened 25 years ago, which my dad is a battery charge now, whether it's sure or false, whatever. So while she is bisexual and she claims to support the LGBT community, she very clearly doesn't support the T part of that acronym if she's liking transphobic posts. God, that guy is a, is a lot. Um, <laughs> Why do they always talk so loud? Well, and just like, you know that more than one thing can be true at the same time, right? There's enough energy to go around. You can be upset that homelessness is an issue. You can also be upset that Trump has done some bad things. <laughs> no, it's one or the other. Another one that she liked, it was like this car <laughs> that was like burning through a colorful flag on the street to like destroy it. It was like a chalk, I think it's chalk or paint. So they were like coming in hot, you know what I mean? It says Florida man does burnout on colorful street in Fort Lauderdale and is now being investigated. Here's my question. If burning a US flag is constitutionally protected free speech, why is this any different? Do we arrest people for burnouts now? Traffic ticket at worst. And then the Instagram post, I guess was reposted by someone called conservative ant. And it says when you're extreme, others are extreme. Dream. You get what you put out. Enough is enough. And guess who liked it? Lauren the Mortician. She literally has addressed it recently. She's like, guys, I'm not freaking homophobic. I'm bisexual. And it's like, girly pop, that's not that's how this That's giving, works. I'm friends with a black person. People don't realize that internalized phobias are a thing. It's like, like, I feel like just as prevalent as externalized. I mean, if not more. Just pearly things. Hello? Does anybody hate women more than her? Oh no, and she is one. People are like putting two and two together and being like, is that why you hate Jamie so much? We don't know. It seems like in general, she just hates people who know more than her. But it is interesting that I was able to pick up on that just from the implied creepiness by, yeah. Well, and I mean, it's really not hard to see that she follows a ton of conservative pages and it's one thing to follow conservative pages. It's another thing to like homophobic, transphobic posts. Like you are a public figure. That's you thing. know I'm people like, are going to find that. Just Why would you do that? <laughs> right? I don't know. Just feels like career suicide, but it's just her opinion. That's the thing. She paints it as like, I'm just an opinionated person. And like, okay, but my thing with opinionated people, because there seems to be quite a few of them on the internet is like, okay, you're opinionated. Then just be ready for other people's fucking opinions too, because that's what's going to happen. I was just going to say, well, if it's just your opinion, then why are you so mad if people disagree with it? <laughs> and not even just so mad, like Jamie, that whole Jamie thing has been going on for months. It's like, sister, let it fucking go. Like, Who it's has just- the time? I know. And the thing is too, is like, she's still doing car seat things. I think she just reviewed another car seat like a couple days ago. Like she's still on this train of reviewing car seats. People like that piss me off because it's like, they just want to be right. She First wants all, like, to be right. That not. is her. And yeah. second of all, like, why do you need to be a car seat expert? And if you do, then go be a fucking car seat expert. You're clearly not that invested. Yeah, so apparently when Jamie first made his video, which again was months ago, that first initial video, he said that she was getting her license. I guess she told him that she was like gonna get her certification. She never did. Like, because if she did, you better believe she would flaunt it. Shocking, because she probably doesn't actually care that much. I don't know. But my thing is, is, again, I am a mom of two as well. And the amount, the massive amount of shit I know nothing about. And I just have to learn day to day. Like I know my kids basic safety and then I'm just surviving here. That is the majority of us. And for her to pretend that being a mom of two provides any sort of expertise, even if you're someone that likes to Google a lot is ridiculous. Like you may know, and I offer a lot of insight on this podcast about being a mom in the general sense of like what it should mean to provide basic safety for your 
your kids and love and not abuse them. Like I feel like well, that's your stuff something is all everyone based has on, opinion on. Very much like it's presented as anecdotal evidence. It's not like I know I'm an expert on death and this is gonna kill your kids. Like, <laughs> Literally, um, and just like her energy on everything, especially now looking back, like now knowing everything, her energy around death is weird. And it's not again that we can't like smile and laugh and like find peace in death. I think we should. I think everybody should Time and as place. a human being. Yeah. <laughs> Time and place. You did it at my birthday. <laughs> I don't get her angle. I guess it's just, she's just one of those people. You know, she's just got a, she's she's a know-it-all. Yeah, she's a know-it-all. It's like when know-it-alls then get a platform and like have a bunch of followers that may feel empowered to know like that they know more than they did before, even though they have learned nothing new. And it's just And she took obviously. that initial like boost of people liking her stories and the things that she is educated on and can speak on. She took that and just got a huge ego boost out of it and then really enjoyed that whole Beetlejuice thing and was like, oh, they're calling me. And it just got weird. You can't use your following as a way to mean that you are qualified to do something. Like just because a lot of people follow you doesn't mean that you know anything more than anyone else. It just means that people follow you. So don't try and use that as like a replacement for the actual people that are like certified in that field. I mean, even like when we were talking about with Sniper Wolf, that it's like, I hate when people act like just because people saw something, that means it's true or good or right. Like, no. That's just that people saw it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And also, I remember, do you know who Skincare by Hiram is? Yeah. He experienced a very similar type of controversy online, I remember, because everything skincare related for the longest time, he was getting tagged in it over all the dermatologists on TikTok and all this shit. Now, he has multiple, multiple times denounced himself as like, I'm not a dermatologist. I'm just a skincare like addict. And I just have tried so many things and I do know about ingredients and stuff, but I am a consumer who basically knows a lot. And he has since launched his own skincare brand. However, he's working with people who are experts. You know what I yeah. mean? Like he's like not he like, I formulated formula this in, in his my bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So there are ways to go about something when you're not an expert, but you may be someone who's really enthusiastic about a certain topic. There's a certain way to go about it without stepping on the toes of the people who are much more educated and had to literally go to school to do what you did. She writes Jamie's thing off as like, that's a piece of paper. Like she said it in one TikTok where she's like, no, I don't have a piece of paper saying that I can, you know, recommend something. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of an important piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I don't have that little square thing. That means I could drive a car, but like, whatever. It reminds me of like true crime people too, that like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are problems with policing and detective work a lot of the time, right. but like the true crime people that will like dismiss all of that and act like them searching on reddit is a more qualified like no we're in a weird like information era of like there is so much information out there and just because it's out there people think that that means you don't need to go through the proper avenues to get that information. College, for example, used to be something everyone like needed to go to, but then people kind of realized like, maybe you don't really all need to go to college because you aren't really learning anything. But there are specific fields where there are reasons that you have to be certified. It's not something you can just Google and be like, no, well, I spent five hours last night, I know. Yeah, like doctors don't go to school for eight plus years for funsies. Like Exactly, that, the perfect example is like, yeah, I did not need to go to college to become a YouTuber, this I probably could have done better <laughs> if I maybe didn't go to college. That's why it's like, okay, I hear you that Elderberry saved your aunt from cancer or something, but also we can listen to everybody, but maybe there is some people that we should listen to a little bit more. That's all yeah, I'm saying. Yeah. And not all doctors know everything. That's and not the truth either. To the rule. Ugh, there's exceptions to everything. It's such a nuanced topic, but it's like, can we just use our better, like our brain and just like exactly. our better judgment? Well, no, no, absolutely not. We cannot. <laughs> That's basically it though. That's the Lauren the mortician thing as of right now i'm sure that i mean that pediatrician thing was very recent I'm sure she'll get into a fight with another medical professional or some sort say, of professional so right now we're kind of in her villain era where she's like trying to combat the hate but people are realizing who she really is yes and people are in general a lot of people i'm not saying everyone she still has a ton of fans and support and stuff but a lot of people are just over her shit and are very critical of her character as a whole on top of everything the else that's been problematic yeah her attitude is not something people are enjoying at this moment so she's definitely fallen from her mortician grace of like, oh, she's just telling funny stories, which is like, well, that's weird. In general, and as soon but, okay. as, as soon as you get like a taste of that attitude and like 
people start bringing it up more, the kind of person that has that attitude just gets triggered gets 10 worse. times more. And then it mm-hmm. just, it all comes flooding out and you're like, oh, maybe you should have left that in the drafts. Yeah, I don't think we're never going to speak about her again is basically what I'm saying. Part but two, that's it for now. <laughs> so we we didn't really know what to do for a second topic. Honestly, I that maybe could be the entire episode. Um, What did you lean towards? I gave you two options. <laughs> What's funny is that the second topic that you told me about, which is the Cheesecake Factory first date lady, my dad, the last time he visited like a week ago, he showed me it and he's like, talk about this on the show. And then he's like, and this is the type of thing that you can have a guest come in and then they could be like, oh, this is what I think about it. And I'm like, amazing. Thank you. He's got his finger <laughs> on the pulse. But uh, I don't think we're going to be having any guests on anytime soon, sir. It was a good suggestion <laughs> overall. I did like it. But this is uh, an interesting video and it sparked a funny conversation. My Dude, my brother keeps putting it in my... First of all, as if this was even an option. He keeps telling my dad that he needs to be on the podcast as our like boomer correspondent. Oh, honestly, it could be funny. I would like to hear his accent in real life. No, don't even remotely entertain that, please. But basically, he had thoughts on this that I was like, oh my God, you're like old. Like just your, your <laughs> thought pattern is weird. I don't know. Anyway, I'll, I'll give you guys what his take was on this. Shall we just watch the video? The one that went viral? You've probably already seen it, but we have thoughts on it. Completely unrelated from what we're about to watch. What are your thoughts on the Cheesecake Factory? Oh my God. Thank you for asking. I do have quite a few. Usually people do. I love the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, okay. Oh, do you not? I So I don't have like strong feelings against the Cheesecake Factory and like the cheesecake is fucking great. Their menu, it, it, I use it as a comparison a lot of the time. I think the problem with the Cheesecake Factory is that their menu is so vast. Like they have everything. It's kind of like, uh, what's that saying? That's like jack of all trades, master of none. But that's not true here in that case at all because there's but so many slaves. Cheesecake, and I'm not hungry by the time it gets to the cheesecake. Well, that's your fault for eating too much bread. But their brown bread is so fire, so I don't even blame you. But literally, their food is my dream because I am a person that like I can have like an Asian inspired entree, and then my appetizer is like American, like mozzarella sticks or something. Like I like to be all over the place with my food. I'll say I appreciate the concept, but I just don't think. For me personally, this is not my expert opinion. This is just <laughs> my thoughts. Are you certified? <laughs> I might be certified in chain restaurants. So I, <laughs> I just have never found anything that I like love from Cheesecake Factory. Avocado egg rolls. Do you think that I like avocado I egg know, rolls? I know. See, that's the thing. I'm like, Lily, you're either going to try the che- cheeseburgers or like the chicken tenders. What are we going to no, do with that? Like, at, at the same time, wouldn't you think that like the Cheesecake Factory has to have something that I love? It's like, everything's fine. Like, I'm not mad if I go to the Cheesecake Factory. It's, it's fine. But I'm not like, oh, can we go to the Cheesecake Factory? cake factory i really like it because like i feel like it's hard to decide especially if you're with a big group of like what everyone wants to eat and there it appeals like, just to everybody. M- multiple tastes yeah yeah and the strawberry or is it raspberry lemonade super fire they have good drinks good ambiance the avocado egg rolls are out of this world their sauce mm, i love it <laughs> see my thing is it's good it's just like not something i'm like dying to go to it i did see a really funny tiktok though recently where it was a girl from australia and she was like why did none of the americans appreciate cheesecake factory i literally come to america for the cheesecake factory. oh my god okay well i don't know about that <laughs> okay well maybe australia needs to get some new options but <laughs> i do have like semi-regular fantasies about the cheesecake factory oh see like i've never once been like you know where i really want to go not the cheesecake factory it was chilies until they took the fucking chicken crispers off the menu oh my I'm god fucking chilies chilies is the most disappointing chain restaurant of all time i hate I'm it. just the chicken crispers i have they were my staple and i got them for years and then they took the original ones off the menu. how do you take the original ones off the menu lily you've already dm'd them about this we don't have I time know to get I into have. it I'm very, i have a very public feud with them they like want lily to come to the restaurant and give her like a gift card she's like not unless you bring the original chicken crispers i back. told them that it wasn't too late that they could still have their redemption arc <laughs> they didn't respond again um, oh my god anyway <laughs> back to the cheesecake factory <laughs> my point with all that was just completely unrelated if someone brought me on a date to the cheesecake factory Honestly, I'd be thrilled. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's not a bad date option. I've been on several first dates at Cheesecake Factory. Just first dates? <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't usually go on second ones before I met my husband. That's just no. the first one. Valid. Yeah. Uh, let me just get the door for you. Okay. <laughs> he got me at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. I ain't getting out this phone. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
I guess. Yes. Uh, would you want me to open the door for you? Okay. okay. He's so confused. Yeah. It feels fake almost. Yeah. This is the Cheesecake Factory. This is the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. What's the problem with that? This is a chain restaurant. <laughs> Who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant? You want to talk about it? I'm. I'm fine with talking about it, <laughs> even in front of them. Oh sure. yeah, I want to talk about it. Yeah, come okay. on, get up on in the car. Yeah, we are gonna talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I have so many comments, but I'm waiting. I know, same. Um, okay. Okay. So, so yes, let's talk about it. Let's talk you, about it. So you expect a man to go all out on the first day? Is that right? I mean, you're supposed to. Look at, I mean. But when you take out a beautiful woman <laughs> and you're courting her, because I, I get courted. Courted. So you're courting her, right? You're, you're supposed to take care of her. You're and supposed to cover her. You're supposed to protect her, cherish her, treat her well, right? Yeah. And, That's what you're supposed I, to do. I agree. Not I, I went into factory? this date as I expect, uh, with the expectations for myself, to keep you safe, mm -hmm. you know? to respect you mm -hmm. uh <laughs> to pay for, for your food of course pick you up of course mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just treat you like a gentleman which i believe i have done i mean you yeah, and, you've been pretty and nice then, but and then <laughs> cheesecake pack i i <laughs> just smile on the other hand have certain expectations for a girl i go out with on the first date i expect her to be respectful too i expect her to be cooperative and, and at least, you know, uh, what did I do that wasn't cooperative? Well, I mean, get like, out of the car. Like, <laughs> uh, when we were walking to the car, uh, you wouldn't, uh, put your hand around my arm or anything like that, or hold my hand or anything like that. I mean, it's too early for that. Okay. I yeah. don't know and, you. And I yeah. can respect that. I can respect that. Okay. When, uh, I got to your apartment to pick you up. Uh, you didn't want to invite me in. I can respect that too. We're not again. I don't we're not know there. yet. Okay. I know you. And then, but I, I mean, mean, I feel like I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do as a woman. But I, I got mean, myself all made nothing up. Nothing wrong with the Cheesecake Factory, right? Yes, there's a lot wrong with the Cheesecake Factory. Okay. Well, look at I mean, look at my plan where we were gonna go originally. See, now that's that's where. That's where we should have went, Ari. Right there. Call See, him. Call him. No. What do you mean, no? See, I, I know, specifically I you told you both yesterday and this morning that I'd come to pick you up at 4 a.m. At 4 p.m. Right? Mm. And I got to your place at 4 p.m. You didn't even come downstairs for another hour. <laughs> so I was waiting downstairs I for an hour. Right. But I oh. wasn't expecting for work to take me so long. Oh my god. I got home a little late. And like I said, I don't know you well enough to invite you up into my apartment. And that is not possible. And that's why I'm saying I'm thinking, okay, if we're not there in the relationship to you know, meet <laughs> to, at your apartment. Reverse Uno. Then maybe we're not ready in a relationship for such a huh? nice fancy rela uh, restaurant as Aria. Especially if I'm paying for the whole thing, which I'm still willing to do. I, mean, I would have been, okay. but if we're late, I mean, I told I mean, we you twice. Late. It wasn't that late. I'm we literally trouble. left your place at the time the reservation was supposed to be. Oh, 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 and I specifically oh, said four oh, because maybe we could get there early and even get, have some time to get to know each other on the way there and while we're in the parking lot. I mean, I'm we, waiting for a reservation. We can still get to know each other. Isn't there another restaurant you can call that, like, you know, the no. equivalent to that? I mean, I, I you, literally you don't said, understand. Look at me. <laughs> I cannot go in the Cheesecake Factory. There's nothing wrong I, with I will die. That's okay. embarrassing. Listen, I, as I said, I have very specific <laughs> certain expectations oh, for no. that. I can tell it's not going to be there. I, and maybe we're not right for each other. So respectfully, I'm oh, gonna just drop you off at home. Oh no, he didn't. 
Oh yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. So you just want to call it a night? Yeah. I mean, like there's some stuff. kind of compromise or something? Uh, Ladies, can you believe this? I'm sorry, y'all. He was uh, uh, out of the parking space. I, I, if I don't feel respected, I, I am mean, not gonna go through I mean, with the rest of the on. day. Well, it's gonna be a very awkward I'm car ride. Are you serious? You're really leaving? Yeah. I mean, you didn't want this place anyway, right? <laughs> I mean, That's I understand that I was late. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that I could have been a bit more cooperative. You have, you made some good points. <laughs> I'm willing to compromise. Are you sure you want to go home? Uh, I don't have a lot of rules. I don't have a, a lot of expectations for a first date, but I've already set them. <laughs> You've broken them once. Oh so, my God. I'm sorry. Oh, we're dropping you off home. <laughs> All right, whatever. Well, I mean, I guess I, I understand. You got to do what you got to do. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The slider. I, 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 oh, my God. Is that it? I, I understand where you're coming from. Oh, oh my, you my. know how hard it was to not speak during that? <sighs> Literally, I was biting my tongue quite a bit, but actually, my job was open. <laughs> um... <laughs> Wow, that um, was a journey that I personally would not have liked to Honestly, be Honestly, um, a lot of people reference the Sprinkle Sprinkle Lady. Do you know the Sprinkle Sprinkle Lady? She's no. the one that like tells women basically to just take men's money. And then like she even did it to her own husband. And there's like a whole lore there where he'll come in while she's live streaming. And he'll be like, all right, in the divorce, you can have the house, but then that's it. And then he leaves and she's like, thank you, Charles. <laughs> She could not give a fuck less. I don't know if his name is Charles. It just felt right. So she's a sprinkle, sprinkle lady. She's always telling women like, he needs to pay for everything and you don't need to do anything. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Like that's how she says, that's like her catchphrase, whatever. So people were referencing like, oh, she watched a little bit too much of the sprinkle, sprinkle lady. Like this is a little bit too much. Um, I am horrified. I genuinely hope this is fake. In the beginning, it felt like it was. Then the more you watch, I don't think it is fake. I don't, I get mixed feelings. She cause... gives me feelings like it's fake. He does not. Like his feeling feels very, like you feel the tension. He feels very awkward. He's trying to say the right thing. I got really weirded out when he's like, I expect the women to be cooperative. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, I was like, oh no. Honestly, I was totally on his side until he was kind of like, oh, and you you grabbed my arm. And yeah, I, and I was like, like you didn't invite me in here. I was that. like, oh, you don't need to go in the apartment. But the fact that she took an hour to get I know, I was like, why would she let you in? And I'm like, oh, because you were waiting for an hour. Got it. Yeah, so I mean, which still, like, that doesn't mean he has to come inside, but like, just don't be an hour I know, late. and the fact that she's like, Mm, that's true. I forgot about that, basically. <laughs> like, oh, my God. When you, you had some points. Well, and the fact that she genuinely is shocked that he has the audacity to take her back home. I'm like, girly, what did you think was going to happen? Literally, my favorite is that she almost seems more into it once he does that. <laughs> She's like, a lot of people actually do have that kind of immature way of dealing with relationships or getting what they want out of them. Not to this extreme, but they'll like push this kind of weird, I don't know, like be like they're angry at something or they want like, there's like a whole trend of like people liking when their partner's mad and stuff. You know what I mean? And that is just very immature, obviously. And so then your partner gets for real mad and like leaves you or something. And you're like, wait, what? Like, why? I was just having a good time. I die at the fact that he then was like, I had a reservation at a nice place and was going to take it there. But then I think it's kind of hilarious that he was like, oh, never mind. We're going to downgrade to the Cheesecake Factory. But think about it. You have reservations to a really nice place. That falls through. It's not like you're like, oh, let me go to the cheapest place ever. It's like, first of all, Cheesecake no, Factory no. is not even cheap. But besides that, you're trying to find a place that you don't need a reservation for, which automatically is going to be a chain restaurant. Like that's happened yeah. to me before too. It's like, if you miss a reservation, you're going to wherever you can go. So so the fact that she even made an issue with that, but then literally was like, look at me. Like, I'm too beautiful to be in a Cheesecake Factory. Bitch, what the fuck? Like, you're literally saying, like, everybody in a Cheesecake Factory is basically, it's basically Walmart is essentially what she's saying. One. Also, I my biggest problem to start off was you're waiting until he gets, like, you didn't not know where you were going until you got into the parking lot. No, so, like, no way. she waited until he got out of the car and then he, like, goes to open the she door just rolls and she the just window won't down. get out. 
Oh my God, that was, when I heard the window roll down, I was like, oh no. That just alone is the rudest thing ever. I'm like, you could have even had a different reason maybe why you didn't want to go to the Cheesecake Factory if you had such an objection to it. But like the fact that she waits, like she just wanted to embarrass him right. too. Like it's And no. that she's recording it. It's just the audacity is, is too much. She also got ripped up, obviously. Like everybody came for her ass. Someone said like, girl, those lashes are giving Applebee's. Like you're not even, <laughs> it ain't even cheesecake, honey. Like, like people really came for her, obviously, because when you're that like snooty, you're going to get attacked. One of the reasons that I was like, mm, is this real? Was actually how he reacted to her filming. It was like, oh, we can tell them too. Like, who? It was what? giving, you know, that clip of uh, the waitress that the guy tries to return the meal that's completely eaten. And then he's like, are you serious? <laughs> you're not going to take it back? And she's like, well, let's ask the audience. And she like shows the camera. He's like, literally, it's just bones on a plate. But it's giving that. It's like, I think maybe he was, I don't know, maybe he was just flustered. That part is what felt the fakest to me, like the beginning energy. But then it really yeah. quickly, I was like, oh, no, I think this is real. I don't know for sure. You said she responded. Oh, yeah, that's when I was searching for it. I Because a bunch of people at the time covered the cheesecake lady, and I didn't know who that was but until now. Also, my, so if you guys are curious as to what my dad's opinion on it was, oh, he yes. was saying, he's like, well, you know, yeah, a first date should be a very nice restaurant, candle lit. You don't do Cheesecake Factory for first date. Candle and I'm like, lit. first of all, he's speaking from the experience of someone who like back then when you dated someone, first of all, like his first date with my mom was after he knew her for like three years. You know what I mean? That's different than someone you meet off of Tinder. And then when I put that into yeah, perspective yeah, for him, yeah. he's like, oh no, from the internet? No, no, you take him wherever, that's fine. But like, he's more used <laughs> to like the back. old school, like sitting down, You, we go to a nice restaurant. Yeah, if you know someone and if you like see yourself marrying them, not if you just meet a rando off of fucking Tinder. I've been to every chain restaurant in the world on dates and like, it just works out because no matter who pays, because sometimes I would pay, sometimes they would pay, like it's not horrible. Like you don't wanna pay fucking $200 and then that person is a dick or ruins your night and like you're just, regretful of it like these are I mean, hard I'm times the first to say i like chain restaurants personally that usually means that they had something good enough to make multiple well, sometimes because arby's is a thing and uh, well, that's fast food that's a different category but agreed uh but so it's funny though because she even says um courting <laughs> that he was courting her courting i feel like is when you have like that refers to like when you've been on yeah, a that is not like, a first date is very low expectations especially in this day and age where everybody's just like yeah, eating like a tremendous like amount of all. shit yeah of course their likelihood that you don't like them is very high again why do you want to invest into something you're not aware of when you can go to cheesecake factory and everyone can get a fine dish they enjoy no, but honestly, like, of all of the chain restaurants to go to, I feel like Cheesecake Factory really wouldn't be, like, an insult by any means. No, at all. The least one. Like, I, I understand, again, like, an Applebee's or, like, a Hooters. I think those are different, you know? That could be seen as, like, Hooters weird. especially might not be the, the best. <laughs> but, um, so we're gonna watch, uh, the, here's her reaction, I guess, to the aftermath. We'll start this one, but I think we're gonna end up going to a different one because when I was looking at my phone, I found one, and the caption someone had put was, this will take you 10 years to watch and i started watching it and this oh my god why. the comments on that did you see the comments gather your thoughts then come back you said a whole lot of nothing jada pinkett's school of communication oh my god i cannot a lot of positive someone said i see why you were an hour late this is alicia it's been a while but there have been quite a bit of things on my mind um i believe that many of you have seen the uh well now viral video about me choosing to reject the Cheesecake Factory because I wanted more from my date. I want to, well, let me say this. It's interesting to me that just how- Are you awake? <laughs> no. Can shape how so many view you. Girl, you did, the, you were the one that filmed This is it. bringing me war flashbacks. One of my ex-boyfriends, when he would get drunk, would talk so slow. I'm not even joking. I remember one time vividly we were on the phone and in between his words, like every word, I would fall asleep. My brain kind of resets in between. Like, I, it's almost like I just forgot what they said. So it's just, you need to connect it for me because otherwise, how am I supposed to fucking keep track of this? We will, and by we, I mean Lily, will uh, edit out some of these pauses for the, for our audience. I mean, just for your viewing pleasure <laughs> yes, because it's yes. bad. It's Just know that we're going through hell. Okay, anyway, continue. And so... Oh my God. I Shut up. About, I'm trying to remember. 
Bear with me, guys. I wrote down some notes so I can remember everything I want to say. Then where are the notes? Um, I watched the comments, the shares that you guys, um, the opinions that you guys had. Oh my god. And I re have reflected on all of them, processed all of them okay. that I was able to read. What are your um, thoughts? Many of you have been <laughs> vocal about how entitled I was, how I misused this man. And I want you to understand that my mission has always been for women to empower women, um, for women to feel respected, cared for. Ma'am, I think your mission was just just not go to the cheesecake. Oh, what kind of a fucking mental gymnastics is that? Like, this is not in the name of women empowerment. Does she even have any followers or was she just like a normal person posting? Oh, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I hate that fucking rhetoric of like, this is female empowerment. No, female empowerment is like, I don't fucking need you to get me shit. I'll get my own shit. That's female empowerment. Female empowerment is not like, I deserve better than this, but you still have to buy it though. But wait, you're taking me home? Like, that's not empowering at all. I, just, oh my God. I, I just, it's, I'm dying that she's like, I, I took We're notes. not even halfway through, Lily. I can't. We're two minutes and 15 seconds in watching it on 1.5 times speed and it's still she has not said anything despite claiming that she had notes uh, not be misused you know or abused right no he was taking you to cheesecake factory i've seen and heard um many of our story many women not just women many women and of what i wanted to make sure that this was a topic that we brought attention what is the topic Lily, we're I'm falling asleep. bringing attention? I'm falling asleep. Well, I don't understand. What road is she going down? Like, horror stories of what? Going to the Cheesecake Factory? Literally, what are you well, saying? I can't keep track because she's speaking so slow. <laughs> Many of you interpreted, uh, with you know, interpretations that I saw, I want you to understand that this was never about exposing or embarrassing anyone. Okay. <laughs> That's why you whipped out the camera. <laughs> to spark discussion, to foster learning and growth, right? Hello? Did so she I fucking just it. freeze? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Ma'am, is anyone <laughs> for that pause to be that long a 1.5x speed questions. is so wild. Um, there have been some hurtful comments. Hello? What people wanted to come for my job. It's interesting to me how angry someone can get about something. Girl, why the fuck you posted to the internet? Like going to the Cheesecake Factory? <laughs> oh my god, literally. <laughs> Nobody's more upset than you are upset that you were at the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, that's being upset. Because Hello? I am one who loves to discuss things. Right? Do you? Do I'm, you? Because <laughs> you have not discussed much, ma'am. I've decided to sit down for an exclusive interview uh, with Kevin Wesley. Will you talk during that one? So, guys, you're going to get your opportunity to... Opportunity. Talk to me again. <laughs> a bit more. And, um... Bear with me, guys. I wrote down some notes so I can remember everything I want to say. Jesus Christ. We're just going to have a dialogue. I mean... Uh, no, you're clear. I, oh my, oh my God. This, I, I thought it was a joke at first. Like when the person was like, oh, it'll take you 10. Are you kidding? How are we watching this on one and a half times speed? And it's still <laughs> taking that long. She's literally just not talking for like 30 so, seconds at this a time. Is a nightmare. Right. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? To Will the, you be there on time? <laughs> Kevin Wesley's platform um, on YouTube Kevin and Wesley? Facebook. So it will be live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, like I said, 8 when I say 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. It you are not time. welcome, actually. I'm actually Jesus Christ, off. we're not watching the I interview. I would rather die. And it's probably going to be the same thing. I'm about women empowerment. This is the most confusing reaction I've ever seen. One, just because I was hard to follow because it took so long. But literally, what he didn't do anything wrong. Like, he what? did absolutely nothing wrong. You are full of shit in saying that you did not want to embarrass him. You whipped out a camera and had this happy little shit grin on your face where you were just like, mm, look at what he's doing, guys, when he was literally getting out of the car to open the door for you. Is that even the norm in 2023? I don't no. think it is. No, it is You're not. You're like, if they show up at this point, like, it's just ridiculous to get that level of respect. And I'm not saying he wasn't weird at all. The whole arm around the, you know, the whole arm thing. I was like, yeah, maybe it's not. Fine. But it doesn't make him like a bad guy. It's just like, God, it's men and literally he asks her like should i go and like open the door i think he asked her something similar to that and she's like yeah he was confused why she wasn't getting out of the he car comes, she's like pew <laughs> rolls out mm -mm. 
to do all of that and then act like you weren't trying to embarrass him you were yes you were yeah you were (laughs) and you in turn got embarrassed and now you want to flip it that you're for women and you're for whatever women men take it all out of it this is bullshit like this is not the right way to treat a fellow human being you're spending time with like period she talks about horror stories that women have like first of all I'm really confused of going to the cheesecake factory like what is what's your line yeah she brought abuse into it I'm like what yeah I don't know but like then him like Do you think this isn't going to be a horror story for him? Oh, it is. Are you kidding? No doubt. (laughs) It's so inconsiderate. It's she's just I don't get her. And honestly, like she talks so slow, like I would be happy if I never crossed paths with her again in this life. I don't think she really gets her. I don't know. But overall, hope her interview went well. You yeah, were not going to watch it. So um, let us know in the comments if there was something um, really revolutionary. I'm guessing I cannot. You know. Those pauses. Legendary. Honestly, it made me kind of happy. It makes me feel um, less bad about when people say I'm buffering because at least my buffering is because like there's too much going on at once. <laughs> Not that nothing is going That was really on. a tough watch. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, that's all we have for you anyway, today. <laughs> yeah, that, that brings us to a close. My God. Um, well, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully this part of the video is still playing and you're still watching our outro. Slay. I really, I have no explanation for why that happened and why it has never happened I know before. it hasn't. Actually, that was the first. No, like I've never, that is not a problem that I run into. Well, you guys got to see the deleted scenes anyway. So hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys. If you made it to the end, we appreciate you as always. And yeah, we hope you have a fantastic week. We will see you on Friday. Bye. Bye.